What's up mob crew, I'm Chris and today's video I'm breaking down what happened in Delphi according to the affidavit of Richard Allen that was recently released. Using the witness statements I will break down everyone's path they took and timeline of events. Also today's missing person case is Ali Duval, missing from Grantsville, Utah. She will be featured at the end of my video so please stay until the end for that. Thank you so much. What's up, mob crew? We're going to go over the timeline according to the affidavit and the witness statements to get a better idea of where everybody was at in the timeline of events. So starting with the three juvenile witnesses who arrived sometime before 1230, they were walking from the Freedom Bridge, walked the 501 trail, they would approach the Monon High Bridge. One of the witnesses would take a picture at 12.43 p.m. They then would head back <clears throat> the way they came on the 501 trail. Uh, the same witness would take another picture at approximately 1.26 p.m. A minute later is when Richard Allen's car would be seen on the Hooser Hard Store surveillance heading westbound where he would park his car at the old CPS building. So I have that at approximately 1.28 p.m. He would then take this path towards the Freedom Bridge entrance here and would encounter the three juveniles at approximately 1.30 p.m. shortly after the one witness took the picture of the bench. Uh, the three witnesses each encountered Richard Allen. They all kind of described similar stuff, but different things. One witness described a white male creepy guy wearing jeans and jacket with gray hair uh, with a duck canvas type jacket. One said hi, but he just glared at him. The second, second witness recalled seeing all black and something covering his mouth. She said that he was not very tall, but had a big build and no taller than 5'10". The third witness claims that she thought she saw him wearing a black hoodie, black jeans, and black boots, and had hands in his pockets. Also, witness number three also said hi to him. She claims that he seemed like he was in a hurry and just walked past her in a rush. And assuming Richard Allen started walking past the girls and on the 501 trail. So the three juvenile witnesses would then leave, going across, heading west, past the Freedom Bridge. Then this is when witness four begins to arrive. She heads this direction. As she's going under the bridge, she does see the three juvenile witnesses leaving. She would then loop around and be seen on the Hooser Hard Store surveillance driving eastbound at approximately 146. Witness 4 would then park at the Mears parking lot. I believe she arrived just minutes before Kelsey dropped Abby and Libby off because this witness describes not seeing any other cars in the parking lot. Witness 4 would then start to walk the 501 trail from the Mears parking lot. Just as Witness 4 arrived and started walking the 501 trail is when Kelsey had arrived and dropped Abby and Libby off at approximately 148 because Kelsey's car would be seen leaving westbound at 149 past the Hooser Hard Store. 
Abby and Libby would then obviously start taking the 501 trail as well. So Richard Allen would then be on the bridge, which is where Witness 4 would approach the Monon Bridge and see Richard Allen standing on Platform 1 at approximately 1.55 p.m. She would then turn around and head back, which is when she encounters Abby and Libby walking towards the Monon Bridge. So I think Witness 4 and Abby and Libby run into each other approximately around 2 p.m. I think just as Witness 4 and Abby and Libby run into each other, Richard Allen begins then walking back possibly following Witness 4. And so Witness 4 is now past Abby and Libby. I think he kind of watches Witness 4 leave. And now Abby and Libby probably run into Richard Allen shortly a couple minutes later at uh, 2.02 p.m. And then noticed that there was nobody else uh, coming from the trail. Abby and Libby would approach the Monon High Bridge and actually take a picture at 2.05 p.m. I think while the girls are just approaching the Monon High Bridge and taking the picture at 2.05, Richard Allen has seen that there is nobody else coming and Witness 4 has left and so has turned around, is now circling back and heading back towards the Monon Bridge. Then you have Libby taking a picture of Abby at platform three, looking back. And I think Richard Allen is somewhere just outside the picture, approaching the Monon High Bridge. Sadly, the girls would reach the end of the bridge uh, shortly before 2.13. And Richard Allen would catch up and start being filmed at 2.13, which is when the video starts, when Libby starts recording. Richard Allen and this is where he uh, tells them guys down the hill we also learn in the affidavit that the word gun is used and this is something I talked about in a previous video where I think uh, he brandishes a gun and that is why we only get one second clip of the video is because he's about to brandish that and law enforcement didn't want to release that he then orders the girls to go down the hill. One minute later at 2.14 is when Witness 4 would have already gotten in her car and would be leaving. Her vehicle would be seen on surveillance heading westbound. So Richard Allen would then try to escort the girls down the hill. I think the girls did try to make a run for it and ran across the creek, but Richard Allen would catch up to them. This would happen uh, 2.30 approximately, uh, is when the murder would probably start to take place. Sadly, Derek German would arrive at 3.14, and as approaching the intersection, would run into who we know as the flannel shirt guy, which is one of the McCain brothers. Uh, he would say that he had not seen anybody. Instead of taking the 501 trail, Derek German actually took the other trail. Moving back to the crime scene. So I think the murder sometime finishes about 3.30. And this is where my speculation comes into play. According to the, the affidavit, I think it's a good possibility. Now since he's on the north side of Deer Creek, Richard Allen could have exited through the cemetery as there was a witness who drives by and witnesses somebody walking on the north side of the road of 300 North. And she describes him as wearing a blue jacket and blue jeans, muddy and bloody, and that he was traveling west on the north side of the road away from the Monon High Bridge. So I think... That would be somewhere along this area here. But clearly he was not caught on the Hooser Harvestor surveillance. 
So I think it's possible that he came to the mirror's parking lot and then went back through the trail this way here and then walked back to his car. So there you have it. That's the timeline according to the affidavit with a little bit of speculation mixed in on the times. But I think they're pretty close. Um, also, today's missing person case is Ellie Madison Duval from Grantsville, Utah. She was last seen on the 23rd of November. She has green eyes, brown hair, five foot three. Um, she has been in contact with some friends. She is believed to be a runaway. If you have any information, please call 435 884 6881. Please take a close look. Please take care of yourself and be sure to tell someone you love them. And I love you all. Thank you.